Alright, hi guys. So, it's been a week since I last made a video, and this week has been the best week since I started making videos. The most exciting week because I got our flights booked to Thailand. Two and a half weeks, I am off. I am out of here. Everything came through this week. Got the visa, got all the paperwork sorted out, and I am off. And I can tell you what, it is an amazing feeling. After months and months of just not knowing, not knowing when, how I'll be going back to get everything sorted. It's just, it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It's not quite a big sigh of relief yet because we still have got to get a negative COVID test three days before we go and get on the plane. But yeah, you know, we're 99% of the way there and it's amazing, it's amazing. So I just wanted to go through really how the process has been for me. And of course, for everyone it's different, but I know I found it useful looking at other people's stories about how they've got back to Thailand and then picking their brains about how they've done it and that helped me out a lot. So this is sort of my story, how I got to the point where I'm at now. So, well originally I needed a new passport, a new one of these, unfortunately it's a blue one. Yeah, but anyway that was back in August, um, so I was a bit worried having to apply for this because with Covid and everything, People are saying there's like months and something wait and all the rest of it, but yeah, within within seven days I got this back, so that was awesome. I wasn't quite in the position to get applying for the visa until middle of September, just because I still had stuff I was sorting out here before I knew I could be ready to go. But for me, it took a lot longer than for most people to get the visa sorted. I'm in a kind of category that isn't really well covered, even pre-COVID. I mean, I'm under 50, I'm not married to a Thai national, I haven't got any Thai children, I don't have a big business in Thailand, um, so there weren't that many options for long stay visas, and I didn't really want to do a tourist visa again anyway, even COVID or no COVID. So it took me a while to find the right visa I wanted to get and to apply for it, and it took me quite a while to get all the paperwork and the requirements together to do it. That whole process from applying for it to being told I've got the visa and I can get it put in my passport, that took me about six weeks. So that takes us up to just about two weeks ago, two weeks ago from now. So once I was accepted for the visa, I then had to send my passport off to the Royal Thai Embassy in London. I sent it off during this lockdown period. So they were doing everything by mail, but that was fine. Totally happy to do that because I didn't really want to travel down to London anyway. Special delivery, recorded delivery, and self address envelope, special delivery to come back as well. Sent it on a Monday. I think every hour after I saw it had been received, I was checking the Royal Mail uh, track and trace website to see if they'd sent it back. So a week later, Monday just gone, seeing they sent it. Next day on Tuesday, turned up with a visa inside. I mean, I was totally worried that. You know, there wouldn't be a visa in it, something had gone wrong. I hadn't put the right paperwork together. But yeah, come back with a visa in it. And uh, that was that was a great feeling. That, that really was amazing. <laughs> so under normal circumstances, once you got the visa in your passport, you're good to go, book your flight, off you go to Thailand. But now with COVID, there are a lot of rules to get into Thailand. The most important thing you need is called a certificate of entry, a COE. And that basically, no matter who you are, what visa type you got, you need one of these pieces of paper to let you get into Thailand. They're processed by the Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs. There's a website you can go on to apply for it. And it's processed by your local embassy. So that's a London embassy for me. So in order to get a certificate of entry, you need to have a valid visa in your passport. And you need to show you've got ASQ, that's Alternative State Quarantine Hotel booking for two weeks upon your arrival. You need to show you've got the flights going into Thailand and you need to show $100,000 worth of COVID insurance. So those are three things you need to then apply for a certificate of entry. For me, I was thinking that's going to take quite a while. Um, initially, you've just got to put your passport and visa on the COE website to get approval to then apply for the full COE. So I thought each step is going to take like three days to a week. Well, the first step took me just a few hours. Um, and then after I got approval to upload the full documents, 
I then that was when I went ahead and booked everything, knowing I was good to do so. Because I've been looking at flights, hotels, and everything for months and months and months, I was just ready to go. So within a couple of hours, bang, I put my insurance, my hotel, my flights, had it uploaded, and literally in about 15 hours from morning to night, I'd applied for my COE and got it downloaded. Yeah, so <laughs> that was just a crazy day of being from thinking, right, what's the next step? till actually then having flights booked, hotel booked, all the confirmation letters I needed through, and oh, just crazy, absolutely crazy. So now, even though I've got all these extra things booked up, the flights, the insurance, the hotel, I've got my certificate of entry, you'd think that'd be it, right? Well, no, it's not. You also need, upon checking in for the flight and arrival in Thailand, you need to fill out a declaration form, which is to confirm you're not showing any COVID-19 symptoms. There's also a T8 form, which is like a Thai immigration form you need to do. And the big one is you need a COVID-19 test or a negative, obviously, negative test result, 72 hours prior to departure. And you need a fit to fly. It's like a certificate from a doctor just to say he's passing you off and saying you've got no COVID symptoms, you've got a negative test result, you're fit to fly. So these two documents you need to have within a 72 hour window of flying. Now, that does sound quite stressful because you could be thinking, well, I've got everything in place and what I've got to like worry about two important documents three days before I fly. Yeah, that is a bit worrying, but there are loads of places now. It's become a bit of a norm. There's plenty of private clinics. You can go and get a COVID test done with turnaround times of like under 24 hours. I mean, in some places you can get a test done in the morning, get the results to be cut back in the afternoon. I mean, it's quite pricey, but you know, needs must. For a fit to, fit to fly, well, some of these places do that if there's a, a doctor on hand, but I think I'm gonna do mine through like a video call with a doctor, just send them the, the negative result certificate, quick video call, and bang, they'll send you a fit to fly. So right now, I've got just over two weeks until I've got to do that, and yeah, I think all I can do really is worry about not getting COVID, so I am staying in the house, taking care of myself, only going out for food. Yeah, just hoping, hoping I'm not going to get COVID in the next two weeks. Although now I do have my certificate of entry, I could in theory just go tomorrow if I can get the test, the test results in time. But I've got this house for like another two weeks and in the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, you know, it's going to be January, maybe February before I get there. I kept saying, oh, it'd be really good if I get there for New Year, but I didn't really believe it. But now, I'm going to go in the two and a half weeks after I do my quarantine. The morning I come out of quarantine is going to be the 26th of December, um, which is amazing because I haven't actually seen Kim since the 2nd of December last year. So that's all this calendar year. So it does mean we're going to get a few days together for this year, have New Year together. Oh, and that's, that's really special. That, that's amazing. So I'm super happy about that. But also having this extra time before I go, well, it's giving me the chance to get packed and ready because Everywhere I've been going in these Airbnbs, I've just been dumping suitcases, haldles, rucksacks worth of stuff all across the properties I've been staying at. And not all of it's gonna come with me and I've got all the stuff in my storage unit. So I need to go through that, sift through everything, dump all my winter clothes, pull out all my summer clothes, see all the important things that need to cover with me, like PlayStation, games, Blu-rays, you know, the essentials. And yeah, just get ready. And also I've got my dad and you know, I want to spend some time with him. Unfortunately, uh, we're still in a lockdown here in England until the 4th. I fly out on the 10th, so that's going to give us a few days for me to go and see him, hopefully and spend some time if the rules allow. And um, yeah, just sort of have our goodbyes with the family. Having Christmas in quarantine is not going to be an issue for me. I'm not much of a kind of a Christmassy person. I'm much more into like New Year's and birthdays and that kind of stuff, so yeah. No biggie missing Christmas. Maybe they'll do a turkey burger or something, but who cares? <laughs> but on a note about this channel, it does mean that you're only probably going to have like another two videos from me stuck here in England. So that's good for me because although I want to start doing videos again, I know they're not where near the kind of things I want to be doing videos about because I want to do Thai travel videos and I'm not in Thailand. So how can I do that? But I just kind of wanted to get starting again with the camera work on the computer, just to see what it's like talking in front of the camera. 
try and get some confidence back up for when I get back out to Thailand. So it's been enjoyable for me, even if they've been a bit boring for you, but I'm sorry. But two more weeks, I'll be back out there and I can't wait to make some videos. I can't wait to make the video about going to Thailand, that whole travel day, it's gonna be, oh, it's gonna be great. I'm flying on Etihad, I haven't flown on Etihad for a couple of years. I'm going via Manchester to Abu Dhabi to Bangkok, haven't flown out of Manchester with them. I'm going business class, well I normally go business class on all my long hauls just because I'm six foot seven and I need a bed, um, yeah I need a bed. But apparently their business class product is still holding strong during Covid so I'm interested to see how that's like. The hotel I'm staying at, it's the Pullman G in Bangkok, so we have Pullman, well known luxury hotel brand around the world. I've kind of only put there really on food reviews. You might think that's silly, but I don't think it is because let's face it, if you're gonna be stuck in a room for two weeks, the only variety of your day or something that's gonna come into your room is gonna be the food. And if the food's gonna suck for two weeks, for me, I know that's gonna make me miserable as So if you've got a really good meal, three times a day to look forward to, at least I can put a smile on my face. Uh, I have been piling on the pounds, um, yeah, since since I've been staying in these Airbnbs, I have, I have stopped exercising. I am planning to start working out again next week, and hopefully having two weeks in quarantine, yeah, there'll be enough space in the room to do some hit training, and uh, yeah, get the beach body ready. Ah, well. Right, guys, that's it from me. I just want to say thank you very much for watching. This is just a quick update to let you know that I'm going back to Thailand in two and a half weeks. Super excited about that. It's not lost on me how lucky I am to be able to go out and, and move there, to go and live there in this warm, sunny, amazing country that's only so far recorded 60 deaths from COVID. So, you know, I know if I was staying in England, it's gonna be a really, a really crappy winter into January next year. I think things aren't looking good. They're only gonna get a bit worse as the weather turns and families wanna start mixing more. So kind of, I'm gonna be very, mindful about my dad and my family is still here and hoping they stay safe but also very grateful that I'm gonna be able to be somewhere else um, living with Kim yeah what more can I say so thanks guys thanks for watching I'll see you soon